Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pick to cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke right. up this way. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's show. Uh, here we go. I'm back. There we go. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's show. We're going to have a great time today. I got a good friend on here, uh, Colin Caruso. I told you guys that was going to happen yesterday, and it did happen today. So uh, Colin's here. He's live from his salon. I'll bring him on in a second. I see you guys logging in on the chat. Snowden, what's up? Zena, good to see you. Blanca, Roxy. Uh, how are you guys? Make sure uh, if you guys could do me a favor and just share the show on whatever platform you're on. Let's grow this room as big as we can get it. Uh, if you're new to the show, type new in the chat uh, so everyone can say hi. And if you are uh, an OG of the show, you've been on the show for a long time. We're now 41 episodes straight, 41 days straight uh, of this show. Uh, if you've been watching it for a long time, you guys know the drill, but type Q if you have a question and put that in the chat so I can see your question come up. I'll ask it to Colin and then, you know, we'll go back and forth and we'll answer all of your questions. Today, we're going to get into not only color formula, but we're going to, uh, he's going to show you an application, talk about the new uh, color launch from Paul Mitchell and all kinds of stuff. So without further ado, my good friend, Colin Caruso right here. What's up, dude? What's up, my brother? How are you? Good to see you, man. Yeah. Did you like, did you like that rap at the beginning? Dude, you got it down, man. You're like... <laughs> Radio over here, I love it. I told, I told you, I, I, somebody asked me like, how you get that done? I'm like, you can pay anybody to do anything, really. Yep. There so. you go. It looks great, man. You, you <laughs> gotta tell you this too, man. You are uh, an awesome asset to our industry, brother. You're always, <laughs> and you've been like that since day one. We've known each other 15, 20 years. I don't even know. Yeah, we were both yeah. a little less heavy and a little, lot cuter, but. <laughs> Known you for a long time, and you've always had your heart in the right spot, man. So thank you so much for helping hairdressers be successful. Yeah, you too. That's actually something I wanted to talk about real quick before we get into this, because uh, when I moved from you know farm town Illinois out to the East Coast, you were kind of one of the first people that I met, and uh, you know we've we've known each other since then. That was 16 years ago, and uh, you know I've watched your career because you kind of uh, about a year into me moving here is when your thing took off right? You were traveling the world. And, uh, you know, I always looked up to that, always, you know, thought that was cool and, and wanted to kind of be in that spot as well. And so it pushed me. And uh, it's funny because I remember um, when I hit my first $8,000 month in the salon, I remember talking to you at a training and being like, dude, I hit 8,000. You're like, all right, now hit 10, you know? Yeah. And it was like, that was kind of always the, the, the push in the relationship. So it's cool. I, I, I'm so happy to have you on here. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, you're the artistic director of Paul Mitchell Color now. So, um, you know, it's busy and you got a lot going on. I can't wait to hear what you got to say today. Yeah, man, we are pushing, pushing, pushing. Uh, you know, at John Paul Mitchell Systems, we have new products coming out. Um, you know, so we have a lot to be excited about. Um, salon is freshly getting opened. I don't know if you can see everything yeah. behind me. Yeah. But we are cleaning, scrubbing. Um, so we just finished up all that, get ready to open. We don't open till Monday here. Okay. So excited for that, man. A lot going on, a lot happening, a lot happening in the world, a lot of good change in the world. So I'm excited to be a part of that and, you know, have this amazing opportunity to chat with you yeah. and everybody watching, man. Any questions, anything I can help with, whether it's opening your business or color questions or anything, man, I'm here to help. Yeah, remember, guys, if you have a question, type Q, put your question. Uh, Colin will answer it. He's, uh, You guys always have color uh, formulation questions, all of that in the chat. And, you know, I like coloring hair, but I always say I color hair to make money, and I cut hair, and I do it for free. So uh, I think you're the opposite of that. Yes. Uh, so, we're a good team, man. <laughs> yeah, we're a good team. So it's I don't like hair on me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So if you guys have questions, post them. This is definitely the the, uh, the time to ask for sure. So go ahead, Colin. Yeah, so what we're working on today, uh, we have our brand new Crema XG. If you guys haven't seen this yet, it's awesome. It is a demi-permanent. It is perfectly shade matched to work with these guys right here. If you guys are working with Color XG, you now have your cream demi to go along with it. Uh, if you're not working with Color XG, hey, check it out. 
Uh, it's an amazing color line. It performs as good, if not better. I mean, I think better than all the major competitors. We did independent testing. We are right up there, and we're actually more cost effective, which is huge right now as you guys are looking. So we can talk pricing and all those things for as sure, we go sure. on, but it's really about saving money, not reopening, staying open. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a big, big part of what we're doing here. So uh, let's get into formulation. Are you cool with that, Matt? Yeah, for sure. Love it. All right, so one of my favorite things to work on, especially on these lighter kind of colors, um, iridescent peaches. I know it sounds crazy, but taking these red-orange and these orangey kind of lighter seven, eight levels and marrying them with pearls or violets or cool tones, uh, not something that we would normally consider doing a lot, but when you really kind of take these cools and you marry them with these warm tones, you're going to see beautiful iridescent shiny reds um, and it's really kind of crazy and beautiful but it's something i've really been a fan of over the past year uh, when we do the crema xg videos and i know we're going to watch a little sneak peek at some point of some of the stuff we've done uh, you can see those results and they really come to life when you kind of see them in the sun they're really really pretty really fun uh, and they're a really good option for a lot of clients out there that want something different lighter but not necessarily your traditional blonde or not necessarily your really deep red so it's kind of like a beautiful hybrid color uh, in between nice yeah so i'm going to mix those up and the first color i'm working with uh we're working with our 743 or our 7ro right four is red three is gold so you 7ro and what i've done is i went in with a half an ounce of our 7ro and then I went in with one ounce of our 10 stroke 8.6. Uh, this is like kind of like a, a soft pearly blue violet at a level 10. So that level 10 is not going to over dominate that, uh, the depth of that 4.3 that we want, but it's really going to soften and add that iridescent color that we're looking for. So that's in bowl one. All the crema, really simple, mixed up with clear 10, uh, with cream 10 volume developer. So you don't need a dedicated line. It's mixed up in equal parts, so it's going to be about an ounce and a half. Uh, I don't want to overmix color. That's something I'm bringing up. I don't care what color line you guys use. Don't overmix, uh, especially in this COVID era that we're in. We're seeing less clients, um, so you got to really kind of look at it. The average cost of color from Paul Mitchell, uh, Color X Street, is three dollars and nine cents mixed. That's for two working ounces. Uh, hair grows about half inch to one inch. If you guys think about this, a uh, half inch a month. So if the average guest is coming in every eight weeks, two ounces of working color is enough to really kind of take care of that zipper or whatever is coming in. We haven't seen our clients in a while. So now you've got to think about it. If they're growing a half inch every month, we haven't seen them in three months, that's an inch and a half of regrowth. We haven't seen them in four months, that's two inches of regrowth. Four or five months, that's three inches of regrowth. When we start to really look at how much more color we're using, um, that average application can go from three dollars if you're using paul mitchell it's more if you're using like a well or something else but you can figure it out yourself but what actually will happen is if i'm using triple that amount of color basically now i go from about three dollars to about nine dollars and most of us aren't charging our clients that so you got to look at your profit margins when we reopen again it's not about reopening it's about staying open things like that even just charging that guest an extra six eight ten dollars uh, for excess color is huge right now to keep you guys profitable or even breaking even if you're doing less clients. So don't overmix. We just went one ounce there. Uh, the second uh, bowl that we're going to work with here um, is our is our uh, eight RO. Uh, again, similar. It's an eight red orange, lighter level, and we mixed here with our eight eight one. Um, what that is is that pearl with an ashy tone. So this is going to be a little deeper. Um, obviously, it's at a level eight. We're mixing these in equal parts, so we're going to get a stronger iridescent tone. And then where we place those is going to be pretty significant. And then uh, what's great is we have our XG Clear. Um, this is going to soften those tones a little bit. Not necessarily beef up the level, uh, but it's going to soften those tones. So these are all deposit only. Uh, great for toning, great for adding depth to your hair. Uh, you know, wherever you guys are looking for, you know, in between foils, low lighting, all for those things, but also great on those lived in blondes, you know, that either if you want to neutralize the warmth or if you want to add warmth, it's all perfect for those because they gradually fade on some. So, I'll um, you... this out too, Matt. Sorry, real quick, but I'm using my salon scale. 
And I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this company, but they're absolutely amazing. Check them out. Um, what you do here, Matt, is you basically put in your price of color, um, and then it works Bluetooth with an app. So whenever I mix, it tells me how much color I'm putting in the bowl so I can actually charge the client for that color. I think that's the way the future's going. Yeah. Even if you're not raising prices, just charge a bit more for color. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, pretty rad. All right, so I'm mixing these up. I know I talked a big chunk there, Matt. Sorry. Oh, no, it's good. It's really good. So is this... Uh... This is good for you can do in between foils too as well like that kind of like it's just a good it's it's replacing it's not replacing demi but it's uh it's it's a uh, instead of using liquid if you wanted cream it's more conditioning is that kind of the the thought process? Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things that was really kind of holding us back at Paul Mitchell is we have the we have we didn't have a cream demi so everybody knows Paul Mitchell knows we have the demi and the demi is the fastest growing color line out there it is absolutely amazing it crushes it's a yeah. liquid gel consistency it is awesome um but one of the things we realized that hey if we really want to support color like or, or we're trying to lead with color at john palmetto systems if we really want to do a great job we're missing a cream demi yeah. and yeah. um something we were committed to even when i came first came on board as artistic director is what products do colorists need to help them earn a living um, we identified really quickly that we did need a cream demi even though we have a great liquid demi we wanted to make sure we had that cream demi, and this is again shade matched perfectly to work with color XG. So, um, and oftentimes a lot of people don't realize this, but where do demis work the best, especially cream on really damaged or, or dry hair? Um, you definitely want to go in with a cream, and one of the reasons why is because you know if I took ammonia and run it over dry, damaged hair, it's actually going to resist fade out so you want something that can just be driven into the hair and stick instead okay so the the, the crema xg is great for that it's great for painting in between foils it's great for low lighting with uh, if you you know want to cover gray here and then don't want to run ammonia over the ends which again can actually push color out if you continuously run ammonia over the ends uh your, your crema xg is great for that so awesome. basically anywhere you want to deposit color you really got a great option there okay cool so loving up, man, you gotta do that, right? Yep. So one of the things we're looking at here too, quick color service. Again, we are now, and everybody always says we're post COVID. I don't know about you, brother, but I think we are still in COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you post to me yet? I'm not ready to say post. Yeah. So in this new, we're entering the COVID era of doing hair. Um, we want fast, quick techniques that I can get a guest really happy and satisfied, but also get them out of the salon quicker. Um, it really is, you know, we can't do hair the same way. You're not gonna reopen the same business you closed uh, in COVID, right? So, uh, pre-COVID. So one of the things I gotta do is look for fast depositing color techniques. I'm going with an old technique I did a long time ago, but just because it's old doesn't mean I wanna retire it. I use it all the time in the salon. I know you know it, Matt. It's called the sun technique. Yep. Um, I love it because it's quick. It gives me the protection I want. And uh, what's really cool too is sometimes, especially when you guys look at the clients that have come in and have colored their own hair, and you have that mess, kind of big mess. Crema XG is huge for that. Uh, just being able to deposit over their own brassy roots or whatever that situation they created by creating a, a kind of fun placement that really is safe. Um, you guys can work on the art of formulation, get rid of that warp and have it processed in 20 minutes and in and out. So really quick color corrections where we get that base nice and even, and then we go in and highlight over top, you know, next visit. And that's something that we've been, you know, hoping to do here as soon as we get open. So I'm taking little triangle divots. So we have that circle, the bigger the circle, the more protection or veil you'll have. So now I'm just popping in these little triangles. Uh, through the middle here, right? You guys can see, really simple. We call this the sun technique because my uh, boss, Angus Mitchell, brought us all to Hawaii for inspiration. Uh, this was, you know, when you, basically the exact time you were talking about there, Matt, about 15 years ago, we went with Angus to Hawaii and we had to create techniques yep. uh, based off our inspirational trip. And this was mine because the sun was always there. And, and it, you know, always present, and we really wanted to create fast, fun techniques. 
Um, so you take those little divots, and these are what we call the rays. And I'm just going to zip that back up so you guys can see you don't need a bunch of clips. You don't need tons of stuff in through here. So I'll clip that up. So all this is my base. So I'm going to go in with my deepest color. Uh, I have choices. I can put my deepest color in through the bottom here, or I can put the lighter tone that I work with. What I'm going to do is go in with that 881, my deeper color. And I'm just going to go ahead and start to apply in through here. So a little trick. You guys seen this before? Uh, take your comb. Hold it like, you know, a shank, so, so to speak. I don't know what else to call it. But once it's in here, now pick up your brush. So now you have basically 90 degrees. This paints, right, and this sections. And that makes a big difference. Not only does it save time, it keeps your sectioning cleaner. So there's a fine line between knowing how to do something and knowing why you're doing it. Um, that's what makes you professional. You know, uh, you, you know, knowing how to do something makes you capable. Knowing why you're doing something makes you professional. Figuring out quicker, faster ways to do things and be cleaner. That's what we're looking at to be pros. So this can help me really section really quickly. The other option, Matt, would be to paint and paint and then everything's dirty and messy and it takes a lot longer. So right. actually be cleaner and quicker working this way. So this will take a couple minutes. Uh, what's new with you, man? What's going on, Matt? So, uh, well, first off, I just want to say to all the people that are watching because we're having a YouTube issue, but we're not having a Facebook issue. So, uh, those of you guys that are watching on Facebook and all of that, like you'll be able to watch it later. So, um, I'll repost it. We're not having any problems on my end, but for some reason streaming in we are. So, uh, I apologize to anybody watching that's seeing an issue, but it'll, I'll repost this and everything's good. Um, nothing's new with me, Colin, because I've been doing this show every day <laughs> at 12, <laughs> Uh, so I'm teaching every day, which feels good. Um, I think when COVID this all happened, it was kind of like, I can't just sit at home, you know, and, yeah. and not, and teaching is, you know, for both of us, it's kind of our thing, I think. So like, I just said, you know, what? I'm just going to do it every day. And, uh, so that's been fun. Salon's still closed. We still don't know when we're opening. Um, mm. PA's weird in Philadelphia. Uh, so PA's open half the, half the state. Um, but Philadelphia area isn't so. Um, you know, so we're just waiting. We're hoping like the 26th will be our go ahead, but I don't know. So what have you had to do to the salon, uh, in preparation with everything? Well, first and foremost, I mean, we had to make sure we got cleaning supplies. That has been yeah, the biggest challenge, right? I am like hitting Costco up every day, trying to find wipes. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. We put a nice little stockpile together. Uh, secondly, man, we've been working hard just bringing the team back and um, really kind of learning from everybody that's been open. That's kind of one of the advantages, right? I mean, yeah, I know you guys aren't open yet, but you're in the same boat I am, which is you get to talk to a lot of your buddies. And I know you got a lot of friends in this industry, so you get to kind of hear what's going on. Um, and we're just taking it slow, man. I got to tell you, like we opened this week. We didn't try to overbook. We're not worried about recouping all our money the first week back. Um, ultimately I, I'm just concerned that my staff gets adjusted to the new normal yeah, and that they're able to kind of, uh, you know, take just a few clients and then we'll take it next week and we'll see if we can take more or less or, you know, um, we were spacing out stations. It's funny, man. We spaced out stations before we even closed. Like we knew that was the thing to do March 13th. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so we were on that early. Um, but ultimately, man, we're just getting ready to get back in, practicing with gloves, cutting hair with gloves in case, you know, it's all about managing fear level. Yeah. That's what I learned early. And like, I'm sure you have friends and family that are like at a zero at this, who like see you and hug you and high five you. And you're like, whoa. All right. <laughs> then you got other people that are at a 10 that haven't seen the day of light yet. And, you know, a lot of that has to do with, you know, how, you know, how, you know, this has affected you, you know, and, um, so for me, we're just managing fear levels. We want to make sure that we're doing whatever the state requires, yeah. but we're also, you know, understanding and compassionate that this might be the first time someone's being touched in months 
Yeah. You know, so we want to do whatever we can to make sure they feel comfortable. Um, and we also understand, you know, that a lot of people lost their lives to this and, you know, and it, it's, it's a big deal. It's serious. Um, I have a buddy who's a good friend of mine that went back to work and, you know, came down with COVID, um, you know, so from work. So it's serious. They weren't like a state that everybody wears masks. So, you know, it's okay. a different, but ultimately we're, we're just kind of taking it day by day, man. Yeah, we um we actually had our first, uh, so we do a softball league every year, an, an adult softball league, and yeah. our so, our salon sponsors a team, and we um, we just had a, a our first game the other day, and that was cool because we got around people for like the first time really, and uh, it was fun to like just talk to everybody, but softball is easy because you kind of stay away. Well, yeah. at the at the end they all start shaking hands. And I'm like. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. <laughs> What's the deal? Like that, that's the part we got to remove from this whole thing. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. That's, it's that's weird. That's why I don't play basketball yet because of contact. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's funny, man. I mean, I remember when this first started, people were like, hey, the handshake's dead. You know, people went through this whole thing, you know, obviously. And I knew, yeah. you know, to me, the handshake's not dead. It's just more valuable. Yeah. You exactly. know, yeah. So you know, it, it is it is what it is, and it, it is quote a new normal. And yep. It takes a little bit of getting used to, you know. So. For you know, sure. How it goes, man? I mean, we're stoked. We got a few clients in. I'm only taking uh, four people on Monday. Okay. Again, that's what I always tell people: like, you don't have to make all the money back in the first week. Right. You know, and I think as a business owner, I think it's really important to under promise and over deliver. That's a good point, actually, when you think about it, because I think everybody thinks that if they don't rush their clients back in, they're going to lose all of them or something like yeah. people need to realize that some people still are freaked out. So, like, you don't have to like there's going to be, you know, some that really want in. But at the same time, I think you're it's OK to, to slowly go back into it. It's crazy, man, because everybody says this, right? Like, we're all in the same boat. We're not all in the same boat. You know what I mean? We're all in the same rough seas. Right. But we all have different vessel. You know, sure. depending on if you have money in the bank, depending on if you lost a family member to this, depending on if you have a compromised immune system, there's a lot of depends, you know what I mean? And, you know, if you look at the world right now, I mean, I think – it's now more than ever, it's basically, hey, we got to look at things through other people's lenses, not our own. You yeah. know, I think the more that we can do that, the better off we're going to be in, in, you know, in every way. You yeah. know, so for us, I mean, that's kind of what we've been, we've been pushing. We've also been addressing the issues of, of race and inequality at our work and at our position and having some really great, tough conversations that have needed to happen for a long time and you know I'm, I'm really proud of how we're kind of stepping up and learning and, and adjusting and you know you, we both have kids man and you're you're one of the best dads i know i see you every day out there you're like <laughs> I, know who's, I mean you you you're getting better at lacrosse too i am yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know i know that that you know that's something we both have in common that we want to be the best dads in the world you know that we can be for sure and we want to you know, have a, a great planet for our kids to live in. And I really do think what's so amazing about the beauty industry right now is that it's the one industry that can bring everybody together. Yeah. You know, like people sit in our chair and we can share our perspectives and we can change minds and we can make people more beautiful inside and out. You know what I mean? And I think that's something I'm really looking forward to do to doing when I get back in behind the chair as well. Yeah, definitely yeah. through all of this, um, you know, not just COVID, but everything like just the value of good relationships and making people feel good. And like all of that, I feel like that is definitely on the forefront of like when, like I think about it a lot when I get back in the salon or even when I now, like when I make a post on the internet, it's like, there's a bigger purpose of like, what is your message? Like, what are you trying to do? You know, um, even like the other day, like, so some of us like react. So I'll, I'll get like a weird negative comment. I, I'm on the internet a lot. So I get negative uh, stuff, you know, quite a bit. And uh, it's, you know, you look at it and you're like, you want to react quick. And then you, you just start thinking like, what's the purpose? And like last week I reacted or maybe it was this week. I don't know. I reacted and I post somebody 
saying something negative that was like towards somebody that made a video. So it made me frustrated and I reposted it cause I knew it would get a reaction and I knew people, you know, would talk about or whatever. And then I was like, Christina sent me a message. She's like, what are you doing? Um, because what it does is it just brings out negativity and like, before I felt like, you know, that, that was a conversation that needs to happen. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I think we just need more like leadership and positive stuff happening. And that's what I like. I like seeing everybody stepping up, uh, yeah. even, even the hair companies stepping up and just either owning what they didn't do, uh, that well before and, and owning up to what they want to do in the future or just, you know, just pushing forward, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it's not, you know, it's not always an easy conversation to have. It's not always easy yeah. things to bring up. And of course, negativity, you know, is, and I understand, man, some people, I mean, I, I get why people are negative. I mean, I've been depressed the past month. I ain't gonna lie to you, you know, dealing yeah. with all the world's issues through here. And then I realized, man, this isn't about me. I can help the situation. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can bring awareness to Black Lives Matter, even as a white mail myself i can have some tougher conversations that become easier you know as i start to move forward and i can make the change and i'm not afraid of you know putting myself out there or not having um you know the the response i was quote looking for or whatever because it's really not about that it's about bringing awareness and like i said if you really look at the professional beauty industry or just salons in general salons man we are a hodgepodge of people and, you know, we bring our talent and our A game to everybody and we become valuable. I always said, like, hairdressers, man, we are like the celebrity celebrity. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Behind the scenes celebrity. You're the ones that the celebrities want, right. you know, like in demand. Like, we don't, you know, we don't have to bring that, like, you know, that we don't have the same billboard box office draw by any stretch. But we're the ones that make, you know, society look and feel beautiful. And one of the things I really kind of, you know, understood is that we have a power to, to, to speak, speak our minds, bring people together. And we have a responsibility to make the planet better. And, um, I'm excited to be able to do that moving forward, you know, better and, and learn and grow and try my best to, to be an example. And that's what leaders do. That's what leaders do. It's a responsibility yeah. of leaders, man, you know, and it's not always, it's not always easy. So, you know, good stuff though. I mean, it, it, it's, it's all about seeing things from different perspectives and whether it's COVID, whether it's black lives matter, whatever it is, it's, you know, we know how we see things, it, you know, it's, we have to see it from other sides. Even for me, man, like I, I even have that client, like the example I can give you artistically, uh, it's not the same thing by any stretch, but artistically I have that client that'll come in and be like, does this look red after I did their hair? I'm like, if you see red, like I, I will spend zero time saying it isn't <laughs> right. Yeah. I will spend more time fixing the situation because I want my guests to leave happy. Yeah. You know? So if you're seeing whatever you're seeing, it's not up to me to say yes or no. It's up to me to fix it. It's up to me to make it better. <laughs> yeah. I have the same, my client, uh, I have a client that I can't wait till she comes back, but, uh, she, I'll cut her bangs or whatever. Let's say I cut it and she'll be like, do you think these are the like, do you think these are too long? I'm like, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. If I say they look great, are you going to leave happy and not come back tomorrow? No. Right. That's yeah. the reality. It's like, if it's too, sh it just say, but that, I guess that's some people's way of asking for your professional. Yeah. 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 Or, or just bringing up a tough subject to them, which they don't want to, you know, say you didn't do something correctly. Right. Yeah. So True. they're just asking you, you yeah. know, I'm just glad we're not tattoo artists because that seems a lot more stressful. <laughs> yeah. you know? I can't even imagine. That is, uh, <laughs> that is where you, that's where you want to not make mistakes. All right. So you guys can see right through here. Um, you have that little kind of pinky soft tones. Now keep in mind, that's our, um, eight stroke eight one with our eight stroke four, three. So, what you have is you have that red orange, but by adding that iridescent cool tone to it, you're starting to get this beautiful kind of pinky color. Now, as that starts to oxidize, those orangey tones, those golden orangey tones are going to start to pick up more. So they're going to over dominate that eight stroke eight one. But what you're going to see is they're going to start to mesh together. 
So really, that's where you're going to get that beautiful, soft, level eight red orange, but it's going to have that pearl uh, type look and sheen over top. So these are like really rad colors, and they're really fun to work with, um, you know, these kinds of stuff. And I really do believe this, man, like as we start to look, and I'm going to go in now with our 743 uh, 1086. So this is going to be like a deeper red in through the middle here. Um, but, you know, I really do believe that, like, Again, I said it, I'll say it every class, like knowing how to do something makes you capable, right? So there's a lot of capable people out there. There's a lot of capable, I'm a capable contractor. Like I just hung up a, a hand dryer, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm capable at using a screwdriver, but I'm not professional. I mean, that's pretty much where it stops with me. Um, and I think the same goes for hair colors. Like if you really want to be a professional hair colorist, you really have to start to push yourself harder um, and understand the art of formulation. It really comes down to formulation. Placement is easy. You can teach anybody to place color. It's not hard. It's just like kind of learning how to section out and clip things up. Once you have that, it's kind of simple. So. Formulation is really where you guys want to focus. And now more than ever, you know, clients are coming in with these amazing pictures, these different tones. The worst thing in the world is when a client says, I want my head to look like this, and you don't know how to make that color. That is a terrible feeling. Has that ever happened to you, Matt? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's scary. So one of the things I do is like I look, I constantly am trying to see what colors are trending. Um, I'm trying to see what colors the celebrities are wearing, whatever I can do. Um, you know, there's actually websites like beauty stream where you guys can log on and see what colors are trending. And, and this is kind of crazy. These unnaturally natural tones are trending. I know that sounds weird, but they're actually like dog colors. So think like pit bull blue, wine or grays, um, bat, like, uh, Irish setters. People are actually coming in and wanting these colors that are found in nature on, on dogs in their hair. I know that wow. sounds crazy, but it's true. And, um, you know, so all these kind of colors, this is what we're kind of doing here. These iridescence, they're, they're, they're vibrant tones, but they're flatter if that makes sense. Right. Uh, so how do you do that? Well, you formulate and you practice, you know, and it sounds creepy, but pick up hair off the floor, swatch it, formulate it, figure it out. Um, and constantly elevate yourselves to be able to formulate. That's a good call. Yeah. See, this is where I'm not like a color, like I wouldn't think to do that, but that's like, you can't pick up hair off the floor and then recut it and, and try it out that way. But to color it, it's, it's human hair. Um, probably a great way to like, to test lifting, to test deposit, all of that stuff. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. Hey man, I learned that one on the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can tell you too, like I prefer as a colorist to color freshly cut hair. Okay. That's always my favorite, man. Like if somebody gives me a beautiful shape and then I get to place color to it, it's yeah. pretty cool. And don't get me wrong. It's awesome the other way around too. Like when you, you know, you send your color off and then an amazing hair cutter goes in and like totally shreds it out, makes it look rad. That's a great feeling too. Um, sometimes I don't even recognize like that was my color. So right. that's the same thing. But I really love to place um, color to a shape. And I think that was from my upbringing. Like I grew up, you know, when I first started coloring hair, I was traveling the world with Angus Mitchell, DJ Muldoon, um, you know, some of the best hair cutters in the planet. Uh, you name it, like Takashi, all those guys, Robert Cromines, like, you know, this was – how many years ago, Matt? I don't even know. 10, 15 years ago? Yeah, probably 15. Crazy, 15, bro. Yeah, crazy. So I had this huge responsibility of like, here's my amazing haircut. And this is not a dig on these guys, but they would take just as long cutting it as I would coloring it and processing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. How much detail they put into it. And they loved their models and they would send it over. I'm, like, I'm more of a behind the chair colorist. Like, get it done, get it on, move to the next one. How are you feeling as a guest? What do you want? I'm not really this kind of eccentric kind of artist that's like, this is my art or my work. Or for me, I'm more in the people business. That's how I grew up. Yeah. But um, I'd be working with guys that are just so focused, man. And they would be sending me their life's work. And <laughs> right. Yeah. 
we'll color it. And I'd be like, oh my God, dude, I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what do you do? You know, like, what, what do I do here? And um, I would panic a little bit, you know, in some of these situations. So I had to learn pretty quickly, like, hey, this is kind of simple. All I really have to do is draw the eye to where I want you to look in their shape. So if Angus put like some beautiful graduation in the back line here, if I don't color that properly, you wouldn't really even see that graduation, you know, because it was so perfectly blended. So I learned really quickly to place my lightest color where I wanted to draw the eye. If I wanted you to look somewhere, I'll place a lighter tone there. It doesn't even have to be level. It could just be lighter, lighter tone. And then I learned really quickly, like, all right, you're not going to notice that lighter color unless I place something deeper behind it. And that doesn't have to be darker. That could be tonality, too. So I really kind of broke things down in my own simple way so other things weren't overcomplicated. And the example I can give everybody listening is, like, when the client sits in your chair and she's like, hey, I'm cool. Do whatever you want. I don't think very many artists like that. Yeah. You might like that in hair school. But when you become like a real colorist that's busy and pumped and you know, like that's stress because you're like, do whatever. Like your brain just overloads. Whatever. <laughs> right. That's a lot. Yeah. That's anything. So, and then you start saying, how about this? And they're like, well, not that. And then you realize there's no such thing as whatever. But when a client says, hey, I really want to create a strong fringe and I want to do something lighter around the face or draw, you know, then I can start to say, all right, I now can piece this together. Here's the colors I like, here's the colors I don't like. Um, then I can really start to, to create. So really quite simply, I mean, if you're looking to place color, look at that shape um, and say, hey, where do I want to draw the eye? Place your lighter color there and then put some deeper deep tones behind it so that lighter color pops. So now you're just working with light and depth, um, shadowing and reflection, and now you can really kind of make make color really pop and formulation works the same way. Yes. Really. Yeah. I definitely learned a lot, uh, about formulation from you back in the day, like just understanding, um, you know, you used to do like color math and all that stuff, like just, you know, but then I realized, and this has been over the last few years that, um, I spent so much time trying to neutralize everything that yeah. like, you know, like I wasn't enhancing anything. Like it was like, well, Maybe you should use what is the underneath tone, you know? So. I mean, that's a great point, man. I got a lot of people, I get a lot of questions like you do, I'm sure, online. And one of the questions a lot of people ask me all the time is like, hey, uh, with fashion colors, you know, how do I bleach this out? A lot of times with fashion colors, use what's left to make your next color. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like you don't have to bleach all the red out to put purple in. Right. You know, like red still needs to be there. You just adapt your, your different levels of blues and then you change the color up. Um, you know, formulation is it's essential, man. And, and for one major reason, and the most major reason for me is, and it's quite simple, we love people. Hairdressers love people. So you have a client that sits in your chair and they say, you know, you, you talk to them, you connect with them. You know, this is the coolest person I've ever met. You know, they own a business over here. You run back and tell your whole staff how cool this client is and everything's exciting. And then you go to blow dry that person and then they're crying. That's the worst feeling in the world because you just connected with this person. You feel as bad as they feel. Yeah. And when you don't know how to fix it and you're just emotionally coloring hair, that is the biggest life suck that can happen to anybody. And there's times in my career where I'm like, I'm going to quit. Like, I can't come to work and make people who I care about not love their hair or, or not do their hair right or not know how to get it right. And that's when I really was like, dude, I got to learn the science behind this because I don't want to be emotional. Yeah. You know? Emotions don't – that's not how you have a long career. Sweet. Sweet. So, so I'm going to hit this up on the root. Sorry about it. I'm just going to hit this up and then I'm going to melt that in. So I'm working with both colors. So this is our, our 743, um, again, with our 1086. And then I'm going to melt that in to our 881. So sorry, did you have a question or something? Oh, no, Jenny was just saying, uh, let me throw it back up on there. Um, she said, I'm beyond thrilled to hear that XG has a Demi in cream form. Nice. So she, she says, I feel like my dreams have come true. Yeah, they have. Where do you work with it? I mean... 
I got to tell you, um, we have an amazing chemist, uh, Valerie George, and you guys got to give her a follow on Instagram. It's at cosmetic underscore chemist. Okay. Now, Valerie, not only is she a, a color genius, um, you know, she is basically the color god we all, all pray to. And I cannot tell you how, and she'll share with you guys, and we're doing an amazing series, Matt. I think you'll think this is cool. It's with uh, one of the best colorists in the world, her name's Jen Montoya. She's working with Valerie George, again, our chemist who makes all of our products at, uh, at Paul Mitchell. She makes all these great colors. Um, they're working together, and they have a, a podcast called uh, – I mean, it's not a podcast. It's a web series that we're going to put out called The Color and the Chemist, and The Chemist and the Colorist. And they're basically going to show you guys, like, all these little experiments, like, with hair – to break down the science behind not how hair color works, but why it's doing what it's doing. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, it's bad, dude. It's like like Bill Nye, the science guy, but yeah. they're two amazing women, you know, and it's all focused on hair color. It's so cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so, but Valerie's constantly, and you can follow Jen, Jen's at Jenstar12, I believe is her Instagram. But you can follow both those ladies, they're amazing. Um, and what's really cool, though, is that Valerie really knocked it out of the park on this one. And she gave us a color that looks amazing. And you guys can see it in the video that we'll play. The color is stunning. But how it feels, it feels like nothing I've ever worked with before in my life. And Val was telling me, like, wait till you feel it. And I'm like, yeah, okay. It's crazy. You have all the shine that you need. All I mean, above and beyond the amount of shine. But when you run your fingers through it, it's like it had a conditioning treatment on top of it which is that's stunning so nice. it feels great it looks great and again you guys can follow valerie and, and and jen and um i'm always asking valerie these tons and tons of questions on on how hair color works and having somebody like that again you're taking the emotion out of things and you're backing it with science and that's pretty unreal yeah that's cool so how you take it to the next level. Jess, Jess is asking if she can quiz you on formula for a sec. What would make a good rose gold? So let's talk about that because this is a lot of people ask about formulas. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we have a very similar thought on the fact that it, it you can't just pick a formula and make it a formula. So why don't you talk about like all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, basically you're interacting with what's present. Um, so, you know, a nice rose gold, you want to have a nice eight level base at least. Um, now if you're lower than that, I can make rose gold with high lifts, um, and reds, you know, that's doable. Um, but again, you really kind of got to see what you're working with, what level you're starting on, things like that. So for me, um, if I'm going to pre-lighten anything like this or a little bit deeper or something like that. Um, we have rose golds right out of the bottle, a uh, rose gold muted metallic in the Demi. It's stunning. I mean, right out of the bottle, yeah. it's absolutely gorgeous. But if you're looking to formulate, typically what I do is I add to our level 8 ROs or our 7 Rs, um, anything along that. So that's where you're getting your reds. And then I'll combine those with our Vs, our Violet Series, or our um, 8 Stroke 8 Ones. Similar to what we're doing here. But you would end up really using a little more of the 881 and a little less of the uh, the red, believe it or not. Um, and that's how you get that pinky kind of undertone that you're even seeing in through here. So really, it's it's kind of taking those 881s, those 86s, um, basically your blue violets, mixing them, your pearls, mixing them with your reds. And that's how you'll get amazing, amazing tones. But again, those are things that you guys should be swatching. Yeah. That's good. It's so easy to do. And uh, let's see. Navir has a question. How to fix the final result if it's darker and a client wants a level lighter? Any tricks on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to go back to the shampoo bowl if you're confident. Um, so there's a couple tricks and I'm going to give you some that I shouldn't and some that I, I should. <laughs> there you go. All right. So the first trick that I can give you, if it's one level deeper, um, try rinsing out with like a, a detoxifying shampoo, like a shampoo three, um, and then follow with a heavy moisturizing conditioner. 
like the deepest con deep conditioning moisture treatment that you can get. What happens is that shampoo three in our case will open up that hair shaft a little bit. It's higher on the pH scale, which will pull out a little bit of color. And then when you follow with a deep conditioning treatment under, um, under an ionizer or something like that, a dryer, not only are you repairing the hair, but that bigger moisture molecule is going to fight for space and it's going to push out color a little bit. So it takes a little longer, but that's a healthier way to do it. The other way to do it, again, um, I will take, we have a product, um, well, you can do an old shampoo cap, you know, 10 volume cream developer, a scoop of lightener, and shampoo one or a light gentle shampoo. You have to be careful with those because where you apply it, you really can't get it in every nook and cranny and it's going to lift quicker in some spots. So I, I yeah. really don't suggest that, but you can do it really quickly and just let it shift. And then once it shifts, then you got to tone over it again. Um, that would be the other way. Um, and then there's the old school non hairdresser ways where people use like a shampoo three and a baking soda <laughs> and they try to almost like detail it out that way. Uh, not super, you know, that's old school. But it's worked in some situations, you know, and I'm here to just help you guys figure out when you're in a pickle how to get out of it. So that can work. Good deal. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, you take the you take the other approach, which is, you know, you, you suggest the guest wear it out if it's not too, too bad and and uh, come back in a couple of days and, and reapproach it. That's another time too. Like you gotta know when you're burned out as a colorist too. Like when you put enough time into something and you're like, I am not quite sure. Like, hey, give me a day, come back, and I'll, I'll retweak it. So is the bot? So let's go over this. For a couple of people are asking, they're jumping yeah. on now. So uh, why don't you go through the formulas and how you kind of just a sure. Re recap. Yeah. yeah. So what I, what I'm what I'm doing right now is just meshing all these colors together. Um, so let's start. Here we went in with our H stroke eight one eight R O equal parts. Okay. Um, so if you're looking at the H stroke eight one, it's an eight PA. Okay. And we went in with our eight R O equal parts. That's what you're starting to see here. So you can see because we were equal, and this is like kind of like a beautiful iridescent rose gold color too. So you can kind of see, like, this is a good formula if you guys are looking, you know, to get those rosy golds. You can see that has that peachy kind of undertone. It's still at that level eight. We added a little bit of clear to it, about a half ounce. Um, so that really kind of softened that tone a little bit. So you can see that's kind of processing right now. That's all through the bottom. Through the interior, we went two parts. 7RO, and you can really see the vibrancy that's starting to happen in here. And then we just did one part 10 stroke 86. So, really, um, and I talk numbers, sorry, but the 10 stroke 86, grab the box for you guys. Um, the 10 stroke 86 is right here. Sorry, I'm looking for the box. I don't know where the box went for it. But yeah, the 10 stroke 86 is just to soften the tone a little bit. Um, basically, it's like a platinum. Okay. So by mixing the 10 stroke 86 together um, with that 7RO, again, level 10, not really enough to deposit much there, but it's just going to soften that RO a little bit and give it that little bit of iridescence. Then we came in, and that was from scalp ends in the middle. Then we came in and we shadow rooted with the same. Uh, 7 RO 10 stroke 86 and now I'm hitting the 881 the clear um, and the 8 RO just meshing that in through the ends and then that's it so it's quick and fast I mean I took my time on it I can get this done honestly in 20 minutes what's amazing about crema again think about it you know um, I can really come in and apply a really beautiful color that processes in 20 minutes that's really what we got to be looking at in this new COVID era once we're back to work. What are some things that I can do that aren't going to take me quite as long? Um, and how can I get color done quickly, especially with color correction? 
Um, Krem actually is a great resource for you guys there as well. Clients that have done their own roots, that's super brassy. That's not like the prettiest color in the world. You can go in 20 minutes and this will neutralize. I mean, it's great at neutralizing warm tones and things like that as well. So, so good option. So, uh, Colin, we have this video, right? Um, yeah. I want to roll it, but am I rolling the whole thing just to play it through? It shows a uh, little technique, but not much. It's two minutes, I think. Yeah, roll it, man. I mean, that's cool, right? All right, let's roll that, and then we'll do a little Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, type them. I want to try to keep this. We're at 50 minutes. I want to try to keep it under an hour. We can throw it on Instagram later uh, so everybody can watch it. Video up on Instagram separately if you want. Yeah, we'll do that too, but I think it'll be fine. So I want to roll it because I want people to see, and you'll also see these colors. You'll see the end result and everything. So uh, I think you guys will all dig it. So let's watch the video real quick, and we'll be right back. Here it is. Colin Crusoe here, Artistic Director of Color for John Paul Mitchell Systems, here today to talk about Crema XG. What is Crema XG? It is our brand new demi-permanent, paraben-free, gluten-free, free from animal byproducts, and of course, ammonia-free, demi-permanent color line that is perfectly shade matched to Color XGs. It's absolutely the thing we've been waiting for and it's brilliant. So let me show you guys how it works. I'm gonna take my first formula, which is two ounces 9PN plus one half ounce 7C plus one ounce clear and 30 volume. And that's gonna be with our Color XG. Why? Because I wanna lift her roots, right? She has that natural color. So of course I'm gonna need that ammonia to lift. I'm gonna get that from Color XG and I'm gonna get it brilliantly. What's unique about the formula, I'm taking that Pearl Natural, I'm adding that three, four of that red to it to create a beautiful iridescent natural red I think you guys are gonna be excited about. That's where I need my Color XG to get that lift. What's really interesting though is I have all this beautiful blonde hair that's already been previously lightened, so I don't wanna run ammonia over it. So what I wanna do is just work with an ammonia-free color line that's perfectly shade matched to Color XG and we have that now with Crema XG. So my first formula that I'm gonna work with is my eight stroke eight one, two ounces, plus one half ounce seven stroke four three, plus a little bit of that clear, one ounce of clear and 10 volume. And I'm gonna alternate that formula with 10 V, two ounces, one half ounce seven RO, plus 10 volume Crema XG. So what I have here is a deeper formula, more deposit, with that eight stroke eight one and seven stroke four three and clear. Then I have a softer deposit with my 10 V and seven RO. I'm applying that all to the ends and where it's super porous guys, I'm definitely gonna wanna even that out with a damp application by using Awapui Moisture Mist. I'm able to fill out and even out that porosity and get beautiful even end results. The technique itself is really simple because the product works so great. You don't overcomplicate it. I just came in with a traditional retouch formula with Color XG and I'm gonna get perfectly shade matched and blended results with Crema XG working back and forth. So it's really kind of a simple technique. The product is the star here, guys, and you'll see it's perfect, it's beautiful. This process is 20 minutes and what you'll see is we go from blonde to a beautiful, stunning, iridescent peach pearl in 20 minutes. Shiny, healthy, beautiful color results. Vegan friendly, that's Crema XG. All right, so you guys can see Beautiful results. Let me get us back up here. Pop. All right. There we are. So that was good too. Look at that. Two techniques in one day. Techniques one day, but you can see the results. And if you wanted that to be more rose gold, use less orange and more red uh, instead of the RO and you're, you're in. So it'd be less peachy and more rosy. Very cool. All right. I have a question for you here. Can you explain your view on coloring between foils? Uh, do it after the foiling or as, as you go. I've tried it all. I'd love to hear your perspective. Depends on your timing, right? Um, but for me, I usually put all the foils in and then once they're in, I will hit the mids. So as I put that foil in, I'll just go to the mid and then once I'm past the foil, I just pull the edges out. If that makes sense. And then I'll do that all the way through and then I'll just hit all those edges and then be done once everything's done. I used to do it where I would lift each foil, but I feel like you get more bleed marks that way. Yeah. 
So I would put the foil in, again, go right to the D-mark line, and then pull that hair to the left or to the right, depending on where you're working, and then just leave those ends out, and then pull all those ends together, if that makes sense, and then just hit them all at once. Okay, that's a good call. And then, um, let's see. Before me get uh, Okay. Um, we will, so somebody's asking if uh, we could write out the formulas. I think this will be available again uh, if you guys had like weird ways of watching it, but uh, I'll put it back out so you guys can see the formula. Um, I don't know if you want to go over it just one more time. Just tell yeah, the colors. Sure. And that formula is on the, um, the video as okay. well. Okay. So if you guys just go to that video and I want to tell you like, Go to Color HQ or Paul Mitchell. Uh, if you go put in Paul Mitchell, John Paul Mitchell Systems in YouTube, we have hundreds of videos for colors. Yeah. Uh, and on Paul Mitchell Pro, same thing. You can create an account, log in, tons of access, digital swatch books. Um, we even have a brand new thing called um, Social Gathering uh, where you guys can learn anything from business. You click on a little wheel and you can take classes on anything. And uh, you can actually upload your own videos as well, which is really cool. That's yeah. Social Gathering. Yeah, so just go to paulmitchellpro.com and you can find out all that all that information on there for sure. And uh, make sure you follow Colin on uh, Instagram. You put some stuff up there. You do good. You you uh, you're more active. Yeah, I'm getting all there, the time. Man. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. It it's <laughs> it's a tough tough balance between physically teaching, running the salon, yes. being with my kids, coaching soccer. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, but through COVID, I got a little better. Had a little more time for it. I have a great pricing video there if you guys are more interested on how to price your color. Um, but I, I'm committed to being more active because this is the way we're going. And and like I said, bro, you've done such a good job. I really think you've led the way um, Thanks, in this man. because you deserve a lot of credit for that. You saw that before anybody did. And you do it better than anybody, my friend. So well, thank, thank you very much. It's been like so awesome having you on here. Obviously, I can't wait to have you back. Um, it's cool that we know we can do this, you know, <laughs> so that's nice. And, and you're going to be, you're not that far. So you'll be in the studio soon too. And we'll do some stuff together, but, uh, Colin, thank you so much and, uh, enjoy your day. Enjoy, enjoy. Too, Good luck to the salon <laughs> too, man. Uh, I can't well, wait to hear it. I'll yeah, share it. Yeah. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, <you got> it. <laughs> All right, man. Let's we'll see you later. later. See you. All right, guys. Let's see here. All right, guys, so uh, I want to finish this up before the hour, but um, thank you guys so much for hanging in there. I know that this uh, internet connection today was rough. Uh, I apologize for that. Hopefully the recording is good. I think it will be. And I'm going to uh, re-upload it on all the platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So you won't see this live link anymore, but make sure you follow me on all those platforms because I will repost it for you. Um, so that you guys can watch it for sure. Uh, thank you guys so much. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed all that information with Colin. Colin's a super smart guy. So make sure you go follow him on Instagram, at, uh, Colin Caruso um, on Instagram. And uh, that's it. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be teaching myself, <laughs> not teaching myself, but teaching you guys myself, uh, if that makes sense. All right, cool. I uh, can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Uh, let me know. Uh, what you think of the show after I repost it and you watch it again. Uh, thank you guys so much. I'll see you real, real soon. Thanks so much. And I'm ringing. <laughs> what do we say at the end of the show? It's going to be a great day. Be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. See you guys. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way.